owe you anything. Because he's my father! Well, that was a surprise. They played that creepy line well. Come on, vengeance. Be careful. That name might stick. Just ask She-Hulk. It's not really love. Camaraderie? Just enjoying some smooches? Let's call it superhero love. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon on Hush. Dude is playing pool and sunglasses at night. What else do you need to know about him? Um, one fear isn't enough. You ask nicely? Could never hurt to try. My mom always said you get more flies with honey than bullets. You say, Salvatore Moroni got my father killed. Again, Bats is too emotionally wrecked to think straight. Logical Bats would, bare minimum, take this guy's word with a grain of salt. I finally noticed the Carmine has those comic accurate scars on his cheek. I could teach you how to fight, but I wasn't equipped to take care of you. You needed a father. It's funny that while Matt Reeves and friends absolutely did skip the death of the Waynes, which obviously thank you, he still gave us a fake out with the young boy in the beginning who ends up also losing his father. I thought I'd mastered all that. I'm not afraid to die. I'm losing somebody I care about. What a simple way of putting into words who this Bruce Wayne is. Too short-sighted to even see he still has things to fear. They went through this entire beat in a few minutes in Batman Begins, but it's got way more impact here. And it's all of it for this character. This is what makes Batman Batman. He doesn't care if he's hurt or killed, but knows that if he is, he can no longer take care of those around him. So he has to balance it. Big fan of the janky looking bat signal in general. It almost makes it more unnerving serving that fear Bats was talking about in the beginning. And it's clearly just a mangled piece of metal shoved into a spotlight, so it makes sense. There is something immensely disturbing about not seeing it, but just hearing it. Theater of the mind can often be worse. Truly awful. We work for him. There it is. Of course you do. Have you seen this guy? Simmons demands respect. I got nine of them. Love it. But do you lose a life when someone saves you? Do Final Destination rules apply? Man, is this a nod to the Adam West Batman with him and Robin climbing up the buildings? I could be wrong, but I have expected Green Hornet and Kato to make a cameo through the window. <laughs> That would be terrifying. Anytime he acts like an actual bat, hanging off the ceiling, hanging off the earth. I know movies are more than the sum of their parts, more than the cool set pieces, but dang it, is this an awesome singular part. The entire fight being lit by only muzzle flashes? In theaters, this is one of those, okay, this movie has slid into my top 50 moments. Also, obviously getting shot sucks, but I'm not convinced that Batman is doing anyone any favors by just breaking all the bones in their faces. And like, Batarangs? Just ask Batman. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon on him already having the scratches. Why are you with Zorro over here? Tight nod to the character that often inspired Bruce Wayne to create the Batman. In some of the earlier versions of Batman, his parents were shot after taking him to the 1940 film, The Mask of Zorro. But if you do the math for this movie, Bruce Wayne's parents were killed in 2001, so Thomas and Martha were killed when Bruce was eight. The Legend of Zorro came out in 2005, meaning he'd be around 12 when the movie was in theaters, meaning this Bruce Wayne could have totally been inspired by Antonio Banderas. Or even more likely, if it were me, I would have been inspired to find my own Catherine Zeta-Jones. And look at this, you can actually see Riddler in the window taking pics. It's the correct angle and everything. 30 minutes in, that's epic. Yeah, I'd be pissed that I didn't get to do it too. How is it that everything he does is creepy? Literally, everything. Dano. I don't know, pretty crappy cappuccino art if you ask me. What about chain of evidence? <laughs> the Batman doesn't care. I love his nonchalance. I know it's like his whole thing, but that might be where I'm like, nah, this Batman stuff isn't for me anymore. It's a murder weapon. Killed Mitchell with it. He barely looked at it. Dang, he's smooth. Maybe this is all coming to an end. What is the Batman? Well, good thing your name is Vengeance. You're a good cop. Aw, work besties. Bruce Wayne. You can see the disappointment and resolve on Bat's face. That little mouth twitch, the glance up to the cameras, you can hear his inner monologue telling him it's over. What a bait and switch that works so well when we learn that Riddler truly thought he and Bats were aligned. So they both would be lamenting the failure to get Bruce Wayne. Your mask is amazing. Compliments, and agreed. I'm looking at the real you right now. See, he gets it. Bruce Wayne is the disguise. All it takes is fear and a little focused violence. Oof, maybe a little vengeance too? You're pathetic. Psychopath. So is this just a British guy trying to do an American accent thing? He and Bale say psychopath the same way? Let that murdering psychopath. Psychopath. Anyway, I'm not sure if he's trying to egg on Riddler to figure out the next step, or if he's truly being defensive because the Riddler is, well, kind of right. But either way, I love how they are pushing each other's buttons. You mean you didn't figure it out? I think we all knew there was more to the plan, but this buildup with the strings and Riddler's realization is just... Oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. Well, have you seen his scars? There's no way he doesn't have some kind of blunt force trauma and probably a TBI. 
So, since Alfred and Bruce have never found his parents' actual killer, it's safe to assume this isn't THE gun that shot his parents cut in half and turned into a batarang knife bat symbol. Makes a cool knife, though. It's, uh, a Tucker. Yeah, Tuckers have a way of really ruining everything. Like, everything. Who doesn't love a good detective story reveal? And the idea that Riddler left everything there for him to solve the case, but Bats is just too inexperienced at this point in his career. Uh, thanks for all the comments, and uh, a special thanks to everyone for the tips on detonators. <laughs> Structured exactly like a Twitch streamer. Perfect. When it's not a propaganda video, he doesn't use his acting voice. It's corruption, it's perversion, masquerading under the guise of renewal. This whole video is when I started to actually feel freaked out. There's something so real about this. Too real. It's an incredibly well done scene that sort of starts as a dunk on some online communities, but ends leaving you with the realization that in a movie about crime and costumes and superheroes, the scariest piece is actually the most realistic one. Yike. I enjoy that Arkham is a place where you can watch it all. Maybe not realistic, but after that manifesto delivery, I need a comic booky supervillain palette cleanser. But then we're back to almost too real here. Reeves is doing a great job at making me feel super uneasy. The cultic behavior is so well showcased. The Riddler wears glasses because he has poor eyesight, but they all get his clear-rimmed glasses too because it's part of the idolization and Kool-Aid. She's lucky they're clearly tech to LARPers who have no idea what they're doing. And just for the record, regular LARPing seems like tons of fun. Sorry y'all often get lumped in with these types. Batman drops huge shards of glass on civilians, but who cares? Look at this controlled explosion. And he probably knew it was breakaway glass anyway. No bullets, just grappling hooks into people and then using those hooked people as counterweights, but no bullets. Again, I'm just wondering how many of the Batman's opponents often wish for death. After the Dano Creepo Fest, it's nice to see bats just going bananas and cracking some skulls. And if you're ever wondering why these fights feel a little different, it's the lack of cuts. 7 to 10 seconds doesn't seem like a long time, but it's eons in fight choreography, and there are a few of them. No capes! I can't say if this is the first time it's happened, but you want to talk realism? Goons are gonna snap you down with your cape constantly. But I'm conflicted because I still think we should introduce capes into everyday society. Yep, I guess he never said he couldn't use a gun as a melee weapon. Yeah, I mean, the bat armor is dope, but a shotty to the chest is at bare minimum gonna make things uncomfortable and slow you down a tad. <laughs> Catwoman to the rescue! More superhero smooching. Venom? Did he just use Venom or is it adrenaline? I'm gonna go with Venom since it's green. Yeah, that's what you get when you go after the snuggle buddy of a superhero. I'm vengeance. Snap, got him. Probably a good time to come up with a real name now. Did you realize they'd been setting this up the entire movie? It basically hasn't stopped raining. Like, at all. Ever. It's always raining. And even the news was talking about it. Cutting funds for vital projects like our seawall. Future Robin? This is the second time he's looked out for this kid, and that time he was just Bruce Wayne. So if anyone knows Batman's identity, it's the kid who has had this dude stare into his soul three times now. And notice that he's the first one to accept Batman's help while everyone else is still unsure if he's a good guy or a bad guy. That's a badass mayor right there. She's got a gut wound. This shot. This shot! Batman leading the people away from the danger out of the darkness with his red and black colors. An image that he'll come to embrace more after he's had time to digest the events of the last few days. And it's not lost on me that he cut this wire falling to his death, Vengeance's death, to then come out reborn, baptized by water, and emerging as a beacon that I'll talk more about in the conclusion. And this crossfaded into the flooded city with Kurt bringing us home. This movie is so out of time. Nirvana plants us in the 90s, the detective noir is in the 30s, the tech is modern day. It's a timeline all its own. Someone save that dog! Oh no, I, I, think, I think he's okay. He's just out for a little swim. I am stoked that Cobblepot is still kicking and ready to mess stuff up in his new flooded playground. Which, yeah, that would be great for a penguin. Together, we will learn to believe in Gotham again. And perhaps even believe in Harvey Dent? I have had an effect here, but not the one I intended. Oof, that's some introspection from a superhero. Vengeance won't change the past. All it takes is fear and a little focused violence. And I like that the Riddler helped him get here. To realize that he needs to be more than vengeance if he wants to change the city, that he needs to be the Batman and do more than make everyone afraid with broken face bones. People need hope. And he's not wrong, even if it's odd that it seems like this was a revelation for him. The way he looks at the woman holding his arm as if he'd never even considered he could do more than strike fear into people's hearts. It's a perfect contrast to this first interaction with a civilian he saved using a little focused violence. Please don't hurt me. And I get it, Batman is a symbol of fear, but as not Peter Sars guard's current wife, but Tom Cruise's ex-wife said, it's not who you are underneath, it's what you do that defines you. And look at him not even covering his eyes from the sun or squinting. Or sparkling, he's real dirty. Next, you're a clown. <laughs> 
King Shark's monologue is creepy. That's who's in the next cell, right? King Shark, JK, JK, I know it's Druig. Riddle me this. The less of them you have, the more one is worth. Snacks! Oh, right, a friend. Man, I'm 0 for 3 on these. Don't you ever just say hello? Literally never. I think it's beneath him. The Batman also doesn't eat, drink, or poop. He's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs. gonna kill you eventually, you know that. He does. That's kind of part of the thing he's working through right now. Billionaire orphans will literally dress up as bats and punch criminals instead of going to therapy. The bat and the cat. Do it. What are you even thinking? Do it, my guy. Remember I said before that the caged bat would be why I quit? No, this. This is why. Peace, Gotham. Bike flirting. He's sad. You don't want to admit it, but he's sad. Ah, but still that slight little Bo Burnham smirk at the end right there. Hey, he'll be all right. Ha! This is pretty great. This site's been seized. At no point did I hope that Batman was coming to an end. I never wished it was shorter, and I didn't feel like it skimped on anything either. The film used its runtime to properly unfold a good story. It's a mystery, and it plays out like one. But before we get into the heady stuff, there are a few rapid-fire details I initially cut for time, but then I split it up. The way his pounding footsteps and camera angle introduce him as a villain, this 30-second long take following Bats from the entrance of the Iceberg Lounge to the second confrontation, a newspaper calling him the Caped Crusader, the way he towers over all the cops as Bats but seems hunched as Bruce, the shots with the camera stuck to the outside the Batmobile, the claustrophobia of the attack on the funeral with the gunshots only heard from the inside, this silent scream, the forensic photographer doesn't notice the weirdly shaped blood splatter until Bats does. This moment where we see he's still a little afraid of heights, the Riddler's beta saw devices, his greasy eye makeup, and finally the setup from earlier that cutting the electrical line wouldn't kill him. One of the things that makes it hard to connect with this version of Batman is also a definite strength. Pattinson brings a nihilistic angst to Bats that isn't there in the previous film versions. He's detached in a way that it's almost hard for me to imagine that he actually cares for Alfred. I know he does, he shows us that he does, but at times it almost feels like it would be impossible for him. But it's a strength for the character because it plays perfectly into who vengeance is. It's hard to talk about this as a win, but there is something very grimly on point about having Pattinson's Batman theme, as it were, be by a tortured artist who ultimately took his own life. Something in the way haunts this film and genuinely helps Pattinson seem disconnected in a way that makes you realize he is genuinely struggling. And I know I poked fun at the comparison between Homeless Kurt and Billionaire Bruce, but take note of the exact moment the first time the song kicks in. It's as if his heart sank seeing another kid in his position. And we know it's diegetic since he turns it down later. He's feeling it. I know I touched on it in the main section a bit, but another hard pill to swallow in this movie is that Matt Reeves finally gave us a Batman detective story and made Batman a pretty okay detective rather than the world's greatest detective. Hard pill, but also an appropriate one because this movie is mainly about Batman's transformation from vengeance into Batman. But it ends up meaning that Riddler pretty much wins. A few of the details are foiled. I mean, he ultimately thought Bats would be on his side and that led to his shooting gallery getting taken out. But his overall plan worked. The city is flooded. What Riddler didn't know is that he was creating a scenario that led to Batman taking his true form, realizing that there is more that his symbol can do. And look, I got some pushback about criticizing Batman's lack of resource use to help Gotham, but I'm I'm not just saying that. The new mayor calls him out for it. Family has a history of philanthropy, but as far as I can tell, you're not doing anything. The idea that you can't just throw money at problems to fix them is, it, like... Fine, sure, it's not exactly that simple, except when it is? And he could make sure kids don't starve by writing a check. That's what renewal was before it was corrupted after Thomas Wayne died. The irony that so much of this, the Riddler himself could have been prevented if someone, obviously not adolescent Bruce Wayne at first, but if someone could have kept it under control, the orphanage would have been funded and no babies would have died from cold. And once Bruce was old enough, he squandered his chance to make change in that regard. But that's not the whole point I'm trying to make here. The fact that Bruce isn't helping perfectly reflects what he sees as vengeance's purpose. It's not to inspire hope or to help those in need. It's to crush the bad. It's to stop the creation of more orphans. Obviously, that isn't working since the movie opens with a kid losing his dad. So his pivot to the light in the end isn't just because he got his butt handed to him by Riddler. It's because he realizes that even if he'd won, he's still not improving the city. Going forward, it seems like that will be his goal. The second time something in the way kicks in is after vengeance is dead and Batman has been born. And you realize that the something in the way this time was vengeance. It was Batman's need to make the city pay for his parents' death when there was so much more he could be doing. But even if he's not the world's greatest detective, it's still a phenomenal detective film, and my favorite part of that is his relationship with Gordon. Jeffrey Wright isn't bad in anything, but dang it, he really nailed this. They have an odd couple thing going, but at the same time, it's like these two against the world? Even Selina doesn't really get Bats. Well, that's not fair. She does get him, she just thinks he should change. Either way, Zoe Kravitz does an excellent job with Selina, even if I would have liked to see more of her as Catwoman. She and Battinson had genuine chemistry. 
And then there's a guy who thought he had great chemistry with bats, but sadly was just glomming onto a parasocial relationship that would never be. Paul Dano swings for the fences and hits it out of the park. There is something unnervingly real about his Riddler. At times, Battinson feels like he could actually exist, and then you see him next to a member of the National Guard, and his costume seems silly and impractical. But Riddler could exist. Honestly, Riddler does exist, and while the Nolan Batman films were always trying to be based in reality, I think this might be the first Batman film villain that truly is. So, did we need another Batman movie so soon? Yeah, why not? Who cares? With the success and oversaturation of the MCU and all universes at this point, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more movies like this tucked in their own little worlds with their own little genres and tone. Movies like The Suicide Squad and Deadpool that don't care about anything outside their own movies, or Logan where it puts a nail in the coffin of its own universe. I think it's genuinely fun to see what different writers, directors, and actors can do with these parts. It doesn't need to be so rigid. I mean, honestly, if we're turning Jim's version of Reed Richards into spaghetti, let's mix it up. Don't you want to see Abby Jacobson as Huntress, or Terry Crews as Bane, or Sam Richardson as... anyone? Literally anyone? He could be any character in Marvel or DC, and I'd think, yeah, he's gonna kill it. I guess what I'm saying is that for a pretty serious and grim film, the Batman really makes me excited about the possibilities of comic book movies. Give me a one-off A24-style indie Green Arrow film starring Scoot McNary. Actually, that, that sounds awesome. Maybe Abby Jacobson could be Black Canary. What? Abby Jacobson rocks. Anyway, thanks for sticking it out for two weeks with me. This was a fun one. Next week, a newish one that, well, I don't know if it does take itself less seriously than the Batman, but it probably should. Where would he go? I don't know. Upstate? Bloodhaven, maybe. <laughs>